All right, so it is time for, once again, another van build tour. Why? Well, this thing's had a few builds. <laughs> a few builds before it came to me. It's had a few builds since it's been to me, because sometimes our situations in life change, and we need to do something a little bit different. So that's kind of what happened here. Uh, but there's also a big surprise introduction coming in this video, so you want to stay tuned for that. Uh, before we get into all that, i got to make some breakfast. Oh, hey everyone, before I forget again, uh, <laughs> I promised you a very special introduction. This is, well, some of you may already know. This is Melanie. Um, she's been around, she's been on a few YouTube videos. Um, I don't think on my channel before. Well, not so you'd see her anyways, not so you'd know. Um, but uh, anyway, she's been on Deborah's channel. She was going to be on Two Meander quite a while ago. And we botched one of our first videos on Two Meander. Filmed at the RTR in Corset, Arizona, whenever that was, 2017, I think. When did it, it was 2017? Does that sound right? 2018. She thinks so. We bought the video. The audio was terrible, couldn't use it, so. But anyway, this is Melanie. We'll be back in a minute and get to know Melanie a little better. She's much more interesting to get to know than me. Certainly much better looking than me, but we got hot breakfast to eat. I might work for bacon. <laughs> All right, so Melanie's doing the hard work of cleaning up the griddle here. Uh, the Blackstone griddles are actually quite easy to clean once you have them seasoned, and as long as you don't, like, burn anything on them. Um, they're clean pretty easy. I've been loving this thing. I got it over the winter. My son introduced me to them on a camping trip up in the Bighorn Mountains summer before last, I guess, and I kind of fell in love with it then. So I finally broke down and bought one over the winter when I was in Quartzsite. I've been using it ever since. A little break when I couldn't use it because the weather was so bad up here. But as long as the weather is decent, I cook on this thing every single day. Absolutely love them. Uh, I am not like an affiliate or sponsored by uh, Blackstone. I will have an Amazon affiliate link in the video description, though, if you want to check them out. It's a decent, this is a 17-inch, the smallest one they make, single burner. 
These used to be like 79 bucks. It was 99 bucks when I bought it over the winter, and now it's up to like 120 or 130 dollars because of inflation. So you know, uh, but it's very cool. I really enjoy it, and I love cooking outside anyway. And I love this griddle, and I especially love it when Melanie cleans it up, so I don't have to. Okay, welcome back. We're in the van. We're finally ready to get to it and depart. You all probably tuned into this video to see in the first place, which was the updated van tour. Well, that's the, probably the, the real reason you probably tuned in was to see Melanie and figure out who I've been keeping a surprise all this time. So why the heck did we do another build? For two people to go camping. All right, there you go. I had it built out as a good one person rig right after I got the trailer, right before I went down to Nevada, you know, when I still was just single, I got it rebuilt. Mostly I didn't finish it. I didn't, I didn't finish, but I was working on rebuilding it with the idea towards being a camping vehicle. Cause I had the trailer. So it's a camping vehicle, but I had to be able to work in here and all that stuff. And so I put this little desk in here that you can't really see, but I'll show you. And it sort of worked. It was too crowded still because my chair is too big. Uh, but anyways, yeah, as Melanie said, we try and take two people camping. It had to get redone. You're sitting, you all are sitting on the bed, one, on a bed right now. My coffee cup is sitting on a bed. This is a, yeah, this is all sort of a bed. What we did was took advantage of a big four foot long Rubbermaid toolbox that I had that was in the back of the garage. Put it out, put plywood on top. Got another set of shelves here. The drawers, they have um, plywood on it. So it makes a six foot bed. Um, and we're gonna get it caught, probably. Uh, or else somebody will sleep on the floor, but probably we'll get it caught. And that'll be <laughs> a room for two people to go camping. Why? Well, because we camp in the mountains in Wyoming. And if you camp in the mountains in Wyoming, you're home to grizzly bears and black bears and mountain lions and who knows what else. And I've never been excited about camping with grizzly bears in a nylon tent. I kind of like a hard-sided tent, so thus we're taking the van camping. So that's why we had to do a rebuild. So there's a bed here that's also lifts up, so it has tool storage underneath it, which is great. We have storage under this part of it, so that uh, just just makes it kind of it was easy to recycle the stuff we already had. And that's the big deal. It's crazy expensive right now for materials. So we tried to repurpose everything we already had and buy as little as possible. So there's no mattress on here right now. There will be. I'll just grab a mattress out of the trailer. Which actually, the mat my mattress in the trailer came out of here anyways. So I'll just grab my mattress out of the trailer, throw it in here. When we go camping, we're going to get a cot probably, and then it'll be a second bed, and then we can go camping. Um, looking around down in the back where it used to be a garage area, over here in the corner behind Melanie is... Uh, kind of a tall storage, tall item storage, so camp chair stand up there, camera tripods, my cane, she's showing you there for my back's out. Immediately behind Melanie is a cabinet that, there's a drawer underneath of it that I'll show you. Uh, we can't, I can't show you while I'm talking, but I'll get it and show you. Uh, that actually, Deborah, because this van came from Deborah Dickinson, of course, I bought it from her a couple years ago now. The <laughs> underneath there is a drawer that her cousin Mike built when she was doing a build down in Texas at Mike and Cindy's place. Uh, so I've kept the drawer um, over in the corner, not quite the corner, right here where my hand is sitting is a set power RV60D Pro refrigerator freezer dual zone combination. Really cool fridge and freezer that I, we've been finding tremendous value in. It works great. Trem great temperature regulation but uh, what it does is it, i have a my, my the rv fridge in the trailer died so i took the truck fridge front open door fridge 12 volt fridge out of the van and put it in the trailer and that the one that was in there went to the dump because it was no longer usable this one stays in the van and that's for two purposes the first is it's an overflow fridge and freezer so um Melanie has a Prius, and she does not have a refrigerator in her Prius. The Prius does many amazing things, but refrigeration is not one of them. So Toyota dropped the ball on the refrigeration part. But <laughs> so there's a fridge in the trailer, a small fridge, uh, 60, cubic, 60 or 65 cubic inch, 
this is the overflow fridge. So we can go to the store, we can stock up, because every time you go to the store these days, it costs more than the last time you go to the store. So we stock up and pile stuff up in here. Also, when we go camping, we have a fridge. We don't have to get tricky. And then when you're at a softball game or a t-ball game, and someone says to your seven-year-old granddaughter, no one has food in their cars, she can reply, Pops does. Pops has food in his van. <laughs> the kids do appreciate me being a nomad. So anyway, this is where the fridge rides. We got it in the back. It's out of the way. The great thing is we can access it from inside or outside. In the very corner is batteries, and I have some backpacks on top of them. So, you know, and, and up here we have electrical stuff, what I consider the electrical panel or utility room type thing. Curtains in the back still have two roof vents. Um, the desk over here is no longer being used as a desk, but used as a kitchen table. We have avoided burning the van down thus far. <laughs> How do you say the name of that town in Nevada? Ely? Ely. Ely? I can't ever say it right. Eeny. All right, we won't tell you the rest of that story yet. We'll save that for another video. <laughs> well, we have a new stove. Stove rides right here. We have to do something with the curtains before we can use the stove, yes, but it's a good place to ride, and I have an extension on it, of course, that goes up and down, and that's really convenient when you need to cook, and it does still give us room, especially for the skinnier among us, to get out in an emergency. You can still get around the extension to get out the door. I, know I skipped over the shelf behind me. Uh, this shelf was also built by Deborah's cousin, Mike, and that has, again, maintained, uh, been, been kept through several bills, and... It's a work in progress how all the storage in here is going to be used. We have more storage than we probably need right now. Um, we haven't started putting it together yet. So that's going to be the project in the next day or two because we're recording this on a Saturday. And who wants to go camping on a weekend in the summer when it's crowded, when you can just stay home at your home base camp and not have to worry about it. So next week, when on, on two or three days when it's not supposed to be thunderstorming, which has been almost every day since the weather warmed up, we're going camping and we'll have to get some stuff in there before then we're gonna go and try it out we don't want to do a fancy expensive build here when materials are crazy until we're sure it's gonna work for a camper and that is how we're trying to use it and Melanie could I'm not sure but Melanie could probably tell you even with a Prius you, you end up rearranging things I'm guessing right even yeah. in a Prius yeah. and I know in a van you end up rearranging things things that you think are gonna be great they just don't work so well this little desk here that we use as a table now I had the desk chair in here by the bed that was in here. It looked like everything made perfect. I actually got the thing built. I couldn't even get the chair in. I had to take the desk out, cut it down a little, put it back in. Then I could at least get the desk chair in, but it was crazy, obnoxiously tight. So sometimes things just don't work like you think they're going to. So we didn't want to spend a lot of money when materials are very expensive to start with until we're sure it's going to work for what we're trying to do with it. And when we are sure, we might make things a little prettier and fancier. But until then, we just want to get a basic setup built so we can go camping. And remember, we're not, nobody's trying to live in this thing. I have lived in this van uh, for quite a while. We're just using it for camping. Um, and we were doing that coming back up. Melanie was all set up in her Prius. But as we were making our way north, you know, sometimes it was, well, often it was windy. <laughs> we're too cold to be outside. So, you know, well, we ended up, I ended up taking the bed out in the Nevada desert. And what that did was it opened up enough, because the front chair swivels, it opened up enough room that we could have the desk chair sit back, and one of us could sit in a desk chair, kind of back where Melanie is, sort of, between where we're at, and have plenty of room, and somebody else was sitting up there, and it was just very spacious, and it worked out well. Then I had to sleep on the floor after that. So sometimes things get improvised on the fly, but we just want to make sure it's going to work for us for camping, for what we're trying to do. And then we'll worry about making it prettier or fancier. As far as the utilities, all the power is the same as it's been. Um, you know, nothing new there. 400 watts of Renergy solar panels on the roof. I have two 100 amp hour AGM batteries in the back. Uh, 1,000 watt uh, Renergy in inverter. And let's see, a Renergy Rover solar charger controller, 40 amp unit. So that's all the same. Nothing's changed there, really. Um, uh, it's just the... Uh, Really, the big thing that's changed is the bed get redone. So instead of being in a bed with stuff that slid underneath it, we redid it with 
some pre-built storage which I think will work better um, this is uh, you may not have seen this desk that's new um, the flies new um, <laughs> But the shelf's the same. The cabinets in the back are a little different, but, you know, there's still a storage back there before, so. All right, and ever since Bob Wells started doing videos, and I've been working with Bob since his first video, uh, way back when, six years ago or something now, you, you don't know, you weren't on the road yet. She met me through YouTube, but, uh, <laughs> so to speak. But uh, ever since Bob started, he always asked people, how do you go to the bathroom, how do you shower? Well, I'm sitting on the five-gallon bucket. Enough said about that, I hope. Luggable Lou Lid, they're great. I recommend them highly. Uh, it stores back there out of the way. I think it might get changed like everything. Showers, I think we're not going to bother when we're camping. There's always wet wipes and washcloths and things, and maybe we find a lake to jump in, and but no soap in the lake. That's, you know, that's a no-no, even if it's biodegradable. But yeah, we're only going camping for a few days. It's not a real big deal. All right, Bob also always asks people how do you support yourself on the road, so we'll go ahead and take a page for that as well. I'm a digital nomad. I work remotely anywhere I have sunshine for solar, or I can plug into shore power, and anywhere I have internet. So power and internet, I can work anywhere literally in the world. That's what I do. Melanie is a digital nomad. Anywhere she has internet and electricity, including in her Prius, which is a self-generating vehicle, uh, she can work anywhere in the world as well. So that's what we do. That's how we support ourselves. I've done quite a few builds in different vehicles over the years and rebuilds. And I think it's really important that you start with a very clear idea as much as possible of how you intend to use the vehicle, what you're trying to do, because that kind of matters. That vehicle going by there is my son on a lawnmower. But it... <laughs> and so anyways, we designed this very carefully around what we're trying to do, which is to be able to use it for a few days at a time, go on camping. So that's that's why we designed it the way we did. And I think it'll work for that purpose. And spend most of our time outdoors rather than in the that is That is an important distinction. With the way we're planning and intending to go camping, we are digital nomads. And when I'm living in a vehicle full time, I'm often working while I'm camping or traveling. In this case, we're going to leave work at home base and go out and camp. And so we're going to plan on being out of the vehicle as much as possible. Hopefully going to add some things like, you know, out awning, which I've never done on this, on the van, but I've always wanted to. So I think we're going to add that this year, make it a little better for sitting outside. I do have a chair back in the corner and I'll get an even better ones, you know, but I won't always be sitting on the toilet while we're, you know, camping and stuff. But anyway, I can't think of nothing else you can think of besides we're going to be outside a lot. We're going to be outside a lot. I'll take pictures and shoot videos, but we're going to be outside a lot. So I won't be sitting inside on a laptop, so I don't need the big desk that I normally engineer in any build I do, which is a really good point there. Normally I have a big desk, and we just don't need that in this build. Because we're going to be outside a lot. So, All right. Uh, long enough now. Uh, we can't think of anything else we should tell you. Leave us a question in the comments. We'll either answer it there, or we'll make another video and address if it's like something we should have addressed and forgot or whatever. But hope you enjoy seeing this tour around here. It's hard to show a, a van in real time as you're talking, especially if you have two people, because it's just quite small. So hopefully this was good enough for you with me showing you the scenes around. And that made, everything made sense, hopefully. Um, but thanks for joining us. Leave a hearty welcome to Melanie, please. And this is her first time being on this channel. And believe it or not, not everyone is immediately comfortable being a YouTube creator. There are people in this world, many of them, who think those of us who are on YouTube are nuts. Or at least a little bit unhinged in some way. And so it can be pretty intimidating getting on YouTube when you're not used to that. So give her a hearty welcome. Let her know you want to see more of her. And maybe we can get her back on again. Alright, thanks for joining us for this video, everybody. We will see you in the next one.